Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. My name's Keith and I'm your host. Come on in. Let's see what our next video is all about. All right, we're going to continue on our dismantling of Buffy and we've almost got we've got one piece left. As far as I'm concerned, we got one piece left. I have some accessories on here. We got to pull off and I want to because I want just the raw knee when we're coming off of here. I don't know if we're going to break loose the pedestal from down there or if we're going to break loose. Uh, I got to remind myself of what's inside here. So we're going to pull these sliding trays off. But right now I'm going to take off the auto lube system, which is two straight screwdriver slots. Um, we have a hard line there, so I'm going to go ahead and break loose the nuts on both ends of that. We got an Allen holding that on there and these are plastic lines. Now we did pick up our plastic line material. Because when we get ready to go back with this, actually I got I pulled the little block just like there's a little block over here on this side that lubricates the dovetail and I took and I snipped off a piece of this line what we ended up picking up was uh, PFA material and it's the right diameter and then we picked up a standard ferrule brass ferrule for the plastic material out of McMaster car and we put it together and the nut goes almost all the way in, but it does grab and crimp that little ferrule in there, and it looks like it's going to be okay. If it's not, then we'll modify that, but I believe it's going to work for us. So, we've got plenty of material. Here's 50 foot of this material. We're probably not going to use it all, but you you can buy it in different lengths, and I just picked the 50 foot uh, so that the price per foot uh, was down where I felt like spending the money on it. Um, I know that I'll have some use for it in other places as well uh, because I also have more lines to put in on the Rutland lathe and it will suit my needs there as well. All right, <clears throat> so we procured that. All right, we got this wiper up here, and this is one thing that you want to make. Sh Actually, it's the wiper retainer, okay, for the back of the uh, cross slide or the uh, slide on the on the knee here. And we want to make sure that that, <laughs> that goes on before the table. Uh, we, we read that in the comments. It's the most valuable part, and we want to make it valuable as far as placing it in at the right time. Um, it is valuable to hold your wipers, and the most important part, about wipers besides changing them out before they become petrified forest material is the cover that goes over them and if you have properly covered felt wipers and you're up on them all the time you can handle a little breeze meaning overflow from air nozzles and things like that and it's it's going to be okay if you have a uh, shield over a set of felt wipers that aren't really protecting the wipers from being you know blown or, or away from the the ways themselves you're going to have issues of parts getting in there but if you have a good secure support for your wipers they're almost impenetrable with um with air pressure you're not going to put the air nozzle right up to it but back a little ways and you're blowing, you know, chips or debris off of off your machine, okay? There's a lot of cases where you don't want air near ways and things like that. And that's when you know that they're not secure. All right, back to our operations here. And um, I had a, 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 you know, I, I got a couple tools ready. And sometimes I have most of my stuff ready. But... Sometimes I'm ready to rock and roll on the job and my toolbox is right there and stuff like that and I'm, I'm just not going to have a whole nother set of tools out uh, getting ready to go. 
I'm going to grab, use, put away, and um, more or less like the real shop atmosphere going on here. So I'm going to try to shoot more realistic videos and not so much pre-planned videos because I want you to know what it is entailing to... Okay, this one here, actually, I'm going to put this, this one here is easy to remove because the handle's not in the way. And this one here I can take out all the way here. And that way when the line is loose. <clears throat> it will allow it to swing. It'll be another project probably just cleaning up this oiler and there we go okay there's no need to do anything to that line other than clean that up and our screws we'll keep that we'll set that in a box we're going to drain out that fluids and we'll be putting in the fluids that we want to have in on here now these other two pieces right here, I'm just going to take wire cutters and cut them because I'm not going to try to even... Worry, worry about it, right? Okay, this piece right here. Okay, nice little fitting right there that'll be all washed up all the fittings there they'll wash up nice they'll look good all right now this is just a crescent wrench and that take that off Underneath here, we had this, we, the Gibbs right there, okay? We had this off of here uh, over at uh, 791 Main Street. When we started tearing it apart, we, we peeked underneath there and looked at them on both sides. And there's the two wipers. And we'll polish those up. There is no wipers at the bottom of the knee, only on the top side there. And they're to protect the chips that fall down behind here. Of course, when Buffy's all put back together, we have the rubber aprons, accordion aprons we're going to be putting on this thing. They were given to us a long time ago uh, for Debbie when we were uh, playing with her, and uh, we just decided not to put it on. We were saving them for this mill here. Okay, I'm going to get a box, and we're going to put that in there, and then we're going to pull those covers off of there, and we're going to get a look down inside. All right, we swapped out all of our parts we had up here for the knee that we've been taking apart in the in the in the cross slide um, are in this box here with the oil pump, and we may we may need that to crank up and down yet. Uh, we don't know. Uh, we can we can go ahead and we can put our two slides. Now well, that's not really gonna fit in there too well, but we can put those those two off to the side. <clears throat> and we put our tools up here on the top so we can just kind of grab them all right we know we're gonna have a screwdriver here and we're gonna bring that gib out of there but we want to look in here and there is a ton it's a ton of chips in here all over the place looks like a couple pieces of debris here from a mouse or a critter Here's a piece of line there. We snipped it off on both sides. That's just trash. Okay, now maybe we can see it. All right. Um, all right. Looking down on there is the bevel gear and the ring gear on the vertical shaft. 
and that nut in the middle we're gonna break that nut loose and then on this one here there we got a set screw there and that should allow the shaft to come out here and we need to break loose that inner nut first so that it can unscrew from there and we have the table all the way down I think the table will just lift straight off of the stud but I might be wrong but we need to go ahead and, and pull out this handle as well. All right, we're gonna get a, I think it's a three quarter inch uh, socket. Okay. All right, it's not it's not making that loose at all, but we might have to pull the weight off of it and might be able to pull it off. We're going to undo the set screw now. And so we don't lose that nut. We're going to put it up here for right now. All right, looks like an eighth, eighth inch set screw. Eighth inch Allen on a quarter inch set screw, I should say. Okay, any machinery, when you take a set screw out, you wanna look right underneath it and you wanna make sure that there's not a second one. Or sometimes they have dog points or they have a, um, a serrated point or a straight cup. And that just happens to be a straight cup. And I'm not sure if that's gonna just come out or not. We grab a brass rod. We're gonna come in here. It's a customer. We had to pause here. Now we, we put our puller on the outside of this cog which the handle the dial goes on there the nut goes on here behind here okay so the only way you gotta slide this piece off of here so you can get to these screws for the bearing well this cog here has actually been rusted or joined itself to the shaft i'm not worried about that cog or that piece because the auto feed for the knee that we're going to be putting on here has a cog that we drill and put through this shaft right here all right so the next thing is we ran out of battery on our osmo so we're temporarily using the, the note uh, 10 here, 10s to do the video and all right now now this should come out this way here. We have that set screw out of the gear there. And I can feel it coming slightly. All right, well, I'm gonna I'm going to put this dial on here with the nut so that I can get just a slight bit of 
prying going on. With a couple of screwdrivers, and I should be able to pull that out. All right. Here it comes. Okay, and then you can get behind. Here we go. Alright. You know, there's no way to get into that without wasting that piece there, so... But there's that assembly. And we'll be able to put new bearings in here as well. These are bearings that we... We don't have in stock yet, but we will order those up and all of this will be nice and clean. All right. So we got some and we broke some. All right, here's the gear that goes in on this side and the key's still on there. Okay. And now that gear should be able to just lift right off of there. And we're going to take out the gib and we're going to harness onto this. But I think we're going to vacuum out inside here and get some of these chips out of here um, before we actually get this moving up off of here. And there's the gib for the, the knee. Backside, rubbing side. Let's go ahead and we'll wipe that off with a rag. Here's one. Alrighty, we'll go put this in the bag with the adjustment screw. Okay, it's still pretty stable because we're down all the way on to the top of the knee riser. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and vacuum out some of these chips in here now. I think there's quite a quite a bit in there to vacuum up. Most of these are dry. A little bit of greasy around the gear. See, I can I can reach down there's there's a lot in here okay the casting has like a webbing in here and uh, after it's cleaned up I'll give you a picture inside um, that's where the, the webbing or the little pockets from the casting of the shape inside kind of holds the chips in place. There's no way around it.
Okay. That's most of it. Okay, let's see here. The best way to grab a hold of this and You know, we could probably almost get the hook right underneath here. But of course, the hook is going to... Yeah, I think that hook might be the way to go. Get it nice and tight. Okay. I'm going to move my uh, toolbox here. Yep, bolt pulled right out of there. The gear, the gear we can probably pick right up now. Yep, there it is right there. And it's just been polished from all the chips around it that's been falling down around it. All right, add that to our collection. <laughs> yep, see it. As soon as it came off that post, it became free. It is nose heavy. I think I'll think I'll get uh, think I'll get the height I need to get out of here. Let's see. Take a quick measurement here. Okay, to clear the ways, the base has got to come up 30 inches. Okay, from here to the hook, 43. I think we got it. Okay, and I'm not worried about. I think I can manage that weight. When we rig it back down on there, um, I will, I will definitely have it figured out on my pole exactly what uh, it will take. Okay. Give you guys a little bit more viewing here. Okay, you want to see the other side? Okay, there's the other side. And that'll allow us to get in there and pressure wash all of that. The table, or the knee on the back side. Here's where the finger comes in against the, the gib. Little wedge wedge action there. Still got the checker in there. 
That's looking pretty good. Nice. This is the spot you always want to get to. <laughs> but you always go, oh, that's a lot of work. It is nice having a lift. And we're gonna paint we're gonna paint that section in between the ways and we'll pretty it all up. All right. What we got left is the post to come out of here and we'll get the needle gun and we'll we'll clear the areas on each side for those screws there. And we want to examine this nut here, whether we want to buy a new one um, or if we can live with that one right there. Uh, we'll pull the lead screw right on out of there. It rocks, but it don't have too much up and down. Of course, when we get it out and we clean it up, we'll really get a chance to, to tell how good or bad it is. All right, that key, did it? Did that key go with the, uh, the gear? Let's go check. Yes, that uh, key stuck into the gear. All right, we lowered our knee down on the ground here, uh, on the rubber mat, and we'll go get the dolly, and we're going to come and scoop it up, and we're going to go set up uh, our uh, station there for uh, degreasing and pressure washing. But we want to have this part here ready as well. Now, we dug, I think they're pretty well cleared out now. There's, there's a 3 8 socket head both sides right here and here. We had to needle gun the surface and then take our scriber and really dig at that. And I think we can probably get this down in there now. And we'll take it and we'll go the other direction. Okay, yep. For the most part, pretty much all of this machine here, fasteners came out and they are clean and not really, it's a little bit of rust around the top, but that's expected because uh, chemicals and all kinds of other stuff. <sighs> Come in down around the bottom of a mill. This really doesn't have much paint on it, even from the factory, but who knows. All right, there's the other one right there. All right, and so the lead screw just goes down in... Uh, underneath there now unlike the K&T the K&T this actually uh, gets lubricated from the pump in the knee and this doesn't get lubricated and the only thing that might get here is a little bit of oil that drips down uh, through getting everything above the gear or whatever here but this just kind of shows you you should when your knee is up you should reach up there, put some kind of oil on there. It actually wouldn't be a bad idea to have a little cup and drilled into it. Put a couple squirts or something in it. We're going to dismantle this and we'll be taking a look at it. Um, and I think we'll just pop those three screws out right now if we got, we got a wrench that'll get to that. 
Let's see what we got here. Uh, 5.32. Yep. All right, let's screw this back down so that... Hey, we should have left those screws in there until we busted these loose, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. Uh huh.
write in the comments in the last video there that was questions of uh, what kind of Harley uh, came with my girlfriend and and uh, she bought this for her late husband and this is a 2002 Harley Davidson V rod SCA um, I've had to go through and clean up a lot of pecker tracks that were on it from a little bit of use after her husband passed on and uh, the family kind of <clears throat> played around with it a little bit but I went ahead and I squared a lot of things away on it and we've got it registered and it's up on the road and we went for our first ride together on it uh, the other weekend of course I had to pick up my bike license and uh, and register it but uh, here it is Thank you.